Hello, Goranges are on view, this time for our spring fine sale. We've got a lovely mixture of things for you to look at. It's on the 8th of March, so viewing is this weekend coming. And what have we got for you? We're going to sort of wander around and do some of the highlights. Starting with this, how about that? A Georges Braque. There we go. Don't find many of those in Lewis, but that is where it was found. This, um, this painting by Braque, and he had a thing about lemons. And there's a bit of a sort of lemon theme to some extent in the sale. Uh, yeah, Braque um, liked his lemons and painted them quite regularly in his still lifes. Uh, this lovely little composition to come from local property, estimate 80 to 120,000. So we do have less expensive things available. Uh, running through the cell, I'm down at the sort of more contemporary end of things, which sort of stretches across that way. And we've got things like modern Scottish, we've got Victor Passmore, we've got Rabin here, um, Lowry Prince, Marcel Dief, if you fancy that, two nice Diefs, this uh, still life here and the rather nice um, harvesting or scene there. Each in at four to six thousand pounds. Good looking pictures, those, and still deep, seems to prove perennially popular. Otherwise, less expensive things like Edward Wesson's, as one of the Tate Gallery. Estimates modest, it's two to three hundred, but I think that'll make a bit more. That's probably more like four or five hundred. Or how about an original William Russell Flint? The prints are fairly commonplace and now very much sort of bottom of the market. They used to be a lot of money, not so much now, but the watercolours still hold value. This lot, 452 in at five to 7,000. There's Ken Howard, Doyle John as ever. And then as I drift back this way, we start getting sort of more mid to early 20th century pictures, such as this nice Spencer Gore sketch. It's a study of, um, from memory, Harold Riley's house that the finished work um, hangs in, in one of the English galleries. Um, so that's kind of fun. That is lot 430. There's a Malkin Falraker. There's Sidney Richard Percy. Again, here's an artist used to make fortunes. You know, take a look at that. 20 years ago, you're looking at 30, 40,000 pounds. Now, I think Joe's put an estimate on it, seven to 10,000. That's lot 409. If cardinals are your thing, we've got cardinals for you. Francois Bruneri painting this larger example. The other by Johann Georges Weiber, no less. So uh, there we go, cardinal pictures, uh, again, very much sort of in vogue around about 1900, 1910. Lovely Sir Alfred East here, nice sort of sketchy work that, but real sort of life and vibrancy to it. Great light coming over those hills. Uh, if gun dogs are your thing, then we've got lot 398, John Morris. Nice pair there, very much original sort of untouched condition. Good looking lot that. Quite a number of carpets in the sale, such as this, look at that, lovely colours, finely executed. Lot number 316, Isfahan, estimate 1500 to 2000 pounds. Good looking carpet, number of other rugs in the cell, carpets and rugs, various sizes and shapes. We've got silver as ever, much of it is tucked away in the cabinet, but the larger lumps are out here for you to look at, such as 542. Rather nice arts and crafts bowl there, not hallmarked, please note, but with these little cabochon applied decoration. Looks to very much be of that sort of 1900, 1910 period. Uh, estimate eight to 1200 pounds. All sorts of other silver in the cell, such as that's rather nice silver tantalus or lot 540, the George III basket, estimate five to 700. Then carrying on, drifting past yet more pictures. We've got Sir Joshua Reynolds up there with his mild stick looking out at you. There's old mastery type works. Number of portraits as ever. And we come down into the main cell room. Now furniture is getting harder and harder to find for all sort of top end furniture. To be honest, most of it makes as good money in the weekly cell, if not better, than it does in the fine cell. But there are still a few things we sort of picked out, such as this classic, here we are, typical Edwardian satin wood display cabinet, lot 350, estimate two and a half to three and a half thousand. It's got the painted decoration, uh, quite a good showy piece for displaying a collection of, of porcelain or what have you, whatever people like to display really. Further round, this is nice, early 18th century, olive wood and kingwood uh, chest, would have been on a full stand at one point, obviously the stand and the legs broke away and what have you, but good looking piece, nice timbers, rich colour, lot 322. There's some good long cases as well in the cell, such as lot 302, story of London, this uh, regulator, lovely condition, estimate eight to 12,000 pounds, two or three other regulators in the auction, along with other long case clocks. 
Just going past a nice Donald McIntyre there. Here's another regulator, domestic regulator, Gravel and Tolkien. Again, lovely clean condition. Come from Eastbourne Property, lot 304. Lower estimate there, but probably go on a bit more in, in that case. Another regulator there. How about some snakes? There we go, something completely different. Lot 125, kind of in the manner of Edgar Brandt. Um, heavy cast iron, we think, with this sort of gold painted finish. Lovely, lumpy, heavy marble base. Quite a dramatic sort of statement piece that, as is this fabulous commode. Lot three, three, four, 19, sort of 1790s period, French directoire. Really nice proportions, elegantly made, good looking thing that. Estimate, hasn't come out on the ticket, but I think we said 1,500 to 2,000 pounds on that. Sitting upon it, cracking Japanese Meiji period bronze. Well, samurai with an Oni, about to do battle by the looks of things, look 185, 1,500 estimate. Superb Dutch long case clock there. It's properly tall. I will go around and demonstrate the height of it to you. And I'm four foot three, and look at the size of it, it's massive. Um, no, this is about eight foot, getting on for eight and a half feet tall. It's a fabulous Dutch clock with um, various things going on, lots of date and calendar and moon phase, but also you've got this, um, if I open that up, it'll show better. You've got an automaton here with, with all of these different ships all moving independently along with the waves. Can you sort of see that the waves would go like that and the ships would bob about? So great fun that and no doubt identifiable city in the background, Amsterdam, I would imagine. So uh, there we go, that's lovely. 303, four to six thousand pound estimate. Got some good, more, more rugs here, interesting stalls. Um, from memory, a clavichord, a clavichord here by Arnold Bolmetsch. The maker, late 20th century, I would say. Nice condition, that. Should you fancy a clavichord, it's there for you. Going then through into the smallest room, and again, it sort of represents the spread of the sale. Now, amongst it all, got a good lot to start with, Agatha Christie. Uh, so the first 78 lots, all relating to Agatha Christie, and what's particularly nice about these is that the first 50 or so all came from her property, Greenway, and when the house was taken over by the National Trust. There was a sale held by Neils from memory. And uh, one of our customers went in and bought a lot of, lot of things, books, furniture, all sorts of bits and pieces. And since then has added further items. Uh, and so we've got these 78 lots, books, letters, and then more sort of domestic items. Really good mixture, interesting lot to look at and to start the sale with. Over the back here, signed photographs. There we are, the Queen Mother there, lot 99. And Sir Winston Churchill there, lot 100. We've got some nice ormolu and cut glass candelabra, lot 111. There's Chateau de Chem of various ages and conditions, and some early brandy as well, early cognacs. Very nice pair of pistols down here, lot 96. And uh, what's rather lovely about these? Well, great things about them. Condition, fabulous. All the extra bits and pieces, things like the bullet mould and what have you, are all still there. And then there is a presentation pluck on the side relating to, given by the officers of the, I'm trying to read this upside down, of the best, to the best marksman on the Arundel and Bramber Corps of Yeomanry Cavalry in 1839. So there we go, rather nice local inscription. And um, good looking lot that. Pistols of this type, very popular at the moment. Estimate five to seven thousand. Slide that back in. Underneath, as ever, a mixture, some European porcelain, some Russian porcelain there. And then coming across to the uh, Asian works of art, nice mixture of jades there. A few key works in the back here that Dan's particularly interested in. He says this could well do very well, lot 208. This rather nice little vase with the decoration there, as you see it. Um, rare, he says, ruby ground, sort of pink looks to me, but there we go, lot 208. And then another one he says to keep an eye on is lot 191. This uh, group here, which if you have a look at our listing online, very detailed description of what they're up to, these three sages or scholars. Um, again, not a huge age, but that's not necessarily mattering these days. It's all about sort of scarcity and what it is, but 191. Other Asian ceramics to view, a good look at the website. Nice wall clock there, I go past then, coming along here. Further Asian works running along the line here, including this um, Chinese export tea set with uh, the motto and what have you, would have been commissioned by an English family. 
nice big jars there. And then further down, we've got a bit of set. We've got a lovely launchy group there. There we are. She's at 1,000 to 1,500, look, 139. Always popular, those. Uh, huge WMF vases at the back. These are lot 134. Three to five thousand pound estimate, most unusual. Coming across, Louis Vuitton case. Fabulous table this. This is, if I can find the lot number and show you, lift around. Lot 342. This is a games table where you have the ability to change the tops. So we've got all the chess and draftsmen and the roulette wheel. And we get that out of the way. And lift this off, there we go. So these tops, this is interchangeable. You can flip this over or you can remove it completely, undo the end flap and slide out a replacement. So you could just have the plain top should you wish, which is marketry decoration there, or you can have plain bays. And there are various other options um, that you can further do to uh, enjoy your gaming. So good variety there on that. And across the back here, let's have a look. A few nice bracket clocks. Good selection. Running across here. All in pretty good condition, which is to some degree unusual. There's often sort of some sort of forks or what have you, but they're a good looking lot there. As well as a lovely skeleton clock, 295. Some bronzes, Remingtons, some marbles. And then as I come back down this way, back to items from Agatha Christie's property down in Cornwall. So there we go, quite a mixture for you. We'll pop downstairs and have a look at the jewellery and the watches and uh, then I'll sort of round things up. Thank you. So here we go, in the strong room and a selection of the jewellery laid out for you to get some sort of flavour of what's going on. Uh, particularly good a lot of watches this time. Rolex um, is the brand that seems to see the most activity, albeit perhaps there are other brands that are ultimately more desirable but certainly in terms of uh, interest Rolex commands it all and there's a really good selection here as you can see we've got fairly recent lot 548 a sort of um, steel cased oyster and then there's another a number of other oysters in the sale steel and gold ladies examples all 18 carat there in addition we've got some Cartier We've got uh, IWC, so lovely selection. Uh, some good medals in the cell, not a huge number, but there's a very nice um, group, uh, as well as something a little unusual, this um, American-Chinese um, related me uh, medal, lot 563 in at 1500 to 2000. Uh, and then as for the jewelry, again, of all ages, running from sort of really quite early pieces, then Victorian items, and then through to the more modern few things to pick out that catch my eye anyway. Lot 617, lovely little Cartier Moorish head clip. Lot 617, in at 8 to 1200. And then a selection of rings. If you're after an emerald, there's an emerald and a half. Lot 645, further diamond jewellery. Uh, and then something a little bit special, lot 646. From the uh, sale, uh, this lovely brochure comes with it. Kensington Paris, uh, Palace, uh, Royal Highs, Princess Margaret, Countess of Snowdon, the sale of her jewellery and included lot 104, this antique diamond ring. And uh, here it is, there is the ring. Still with its original tag from the Christie's sale. Uh, estimate six to 8,000 was more expensive back then and may well prove to be more expensive uh, when it comes up for sale on Tuesday with us. Uh, let's certainly hope so. So there we go, really good mixture throughout the sale hopefully something for everyone do come along and have a look we're on view friday saturday till one and then again we're on view on monday uh, from nine till four so do come along and have a look if not look at the website we've also got a catalog haven't we flip there catalog. is a catalog of course a physical printed catalog what a rarity uh, how bizarre but there's a lovely flip catalog online that you can look at which is which is really nice if you're looking online rather than having to do lot by lot you can sort of flip the pages and then see what you like and then if you want to drill down deeper you can do so uh, through the main uh, body of the online listing. So yes, many options available. We look forward to seeing you over the view. If not, uh, be in touch online and we look forward to your bids on Tuesday. Thank you.